Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. A lot of you uh, have been using our design services, which is broken down into noise and treatment. You know, noise is obviously barrier technology. We want to keep sound in and out of our room. And then the treatment side is the absorption and diffusion that goes inside the room. So we offer design services on both. Um, the noise transmission issues, you take the measurements, we design the barrier, you build the wall. That's how it works. The absorption, you can use DIY yourself or we can build the products for you and you can install them in the room. Here's a process that uh, we're using on a project uh, overseas, so we thought we'd uh, kind of highlight some of the steps we go through. So, And that's exactly what it is. It's a step-by-step -step process. Design is always a step-by-step -step process. You start in the beginning with some goals and, and some room sizes basically is what goes on and then we increase or decrease that to fit the usage. So what we have to realize in every usage that every surface area, the side walls, the front wall, the rear wall, the ceiling, the floor are all part of a sonic goal that we have to develop and each surface area contributes about 17 percent to this goal that we're trying to achieve, okay? So we're gonna develop a strategy using surfaces, 100% strategy using each surface area that only contributes 17%. So what do we gotta do? We gotta add all those up to get to our goal. And we can do it. Then we have usage, so we have to match usage to the sonic goal or sonic goal to the usage. So here's a project that we're working on overseas in Asia, 40 foot wide, 20 foot high, 50 foot long. So big, nice sized rooms, 50 feet. We all know 30 cycles is 38 feet. So we've got plenty of room for 30 cycles. Pretty good room for 30 cycles here. Going to have a little problem with 30 cycle energy there. Okay. But all manageable. That's the key. But one of the biggest variables in this project is the end user loves high pressure. Don't ask me why, but this is how some people are. So he's going to be playing uh, at pressure levels of 120 dB SPL or louder. Okay. Not advisable, but this is what we go through as designers. Okay. So this is your sonic goal or strategy to play at these pressure levels. Let's keep it in mind as we move through the process. So middle and high frequency absorption is definitely going to be something we consider. We're going to use low frequency absorption here for the high pressure. And we're going to need a lot of it. Okay, we're going to need all four walls, probably floor and surface area at these pressure levels. We usually can get away with just treating the floor or the ceiling if pressure levels don't exceed 105. But once they start getting over 105, then you have to start treating, you know, all surface areas. Remember, the room doesn't want any low frequency energy. The room itself is not designed for any of it. And we're going to put in 120 times zero. So think about those ratios, okay? So I just thought we'd walk through a couple of the graphics that uh, we've designed for this project. You can kind of see, you know, that this is a step-by-step -step process and there's a lot of work that goes into each surface area that we have to do. And then we have to fit the pieces together. So to work on each surface area separately, then we have to fit the whole thing together. I hope it all works, you know, as indicated. Here's a graphic with the diffusers and what we've created for this project is a foam box. So we started initially running the numbers. We realized that the middle and high frequency area is going to need so much square footage. Well, we just didn't have it. Because, you know, most rooms are not used to working at these pressure levels. So what we did is I designed a foam box where we insert pieces of our foam into the box. That way I get a lot more surface area because, remember, airflow goes on each side of the foam and then comes back out and then runs back through the foam again. So we create a lot more surface area with the foam box. So in two square feet, I might be able to get 100 square feet of surface area for foam. So we call that kind of our foam, foam bo modular box. So here's a graphic with diffusers in our foam boxes. You can see that, you know, care was uh, uh, taken to the number and, and units that we used. In this graphic here, you can kind of see ceiling layout with two-dimensional diffusion, two-dimensional diffusion and some absorption. 
And in this graphic here, the QD13, you can see diffusion modules with the foam box. And you can see the level of care and detail that we go into when we treat these kind of things. Now this is just initial drawings. This is initial phase. We'll probably go to two or three uh, iterations of each one of these because once we come up with a design that works for the numbers, then we put a cost to it. And then usually the owner has a heart attack when he sees the cost. Okay. So then we got to go back to the drawing board and say, all right, what's the highest price product in this? And reduce the number of units affecting the performance. Because our first out of the gate is 100% solution to everything. Our motto is 100% fixed, 100% right. And if budget will not permit that kind of solution at that level of accuracy and cost, then we have to start shuffling things around. Knowing that each time we do something, we reduce the acoustical performance. But that's how it goes. It's always a compromise between budget and performance. How are we going to get the two to balance? So I thought I'd just walk you through the steps of this process and this project that we're working on in Asia. And you get a handle of, you know, what we go through on our design end. Makes me think that after I look at some of this stuff, I got to start raising my design fees. As you can tell by these drawings, it's a lot of work. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.